We have so much talent here this evening that I can call upon anybody if I need them to do a song or dance or anything else. This is the largest contingent of clergy ever to attend a Yom HaShoah program. So let's hear it for our clergy. Ladies and gentlemen, they got Osama bin Laden on Yom HaShoah. We thank God for our military and our president, who is now calling me. Hey, hey. Hello, President Obama. He wanted to give his regards. How many of you have been watching the uh, situation in Alabama, Mississippi? Dawned on me as I was listening to a uh, veteran of uh, the wars. He made a statement. His life was saved together with his wife. And this military person had gone through all the hells that was possible in Afghanistan and some other areas. But he said he couldn't take and would never want to go through again the crying that he saw from his wife. Just think how many wives and children and husbands cried during the Holocaust. For our TV listening audience, this is the largest audience we've ever had for Yom HaShoah here in the JCC. This is the most clergy ever united together, I think, for any service that we've ever had. And we have doubled the amount of people in our clergy association. So we, the clergy of Metuchen, Edison, and area, because we have people from everywhere, we um, are here to serve you, and I want you to know that we are one family. I have one uh, request. When um, I was very young, my parents were concerned uh, whether I would get married or not. If you know anything about me, you know why they were concerned. And I made them a promise that one day I would have so many children, I would be able to put them in a station wagon. In those days, they didn't have vans. So I fulfilled that promise. Number five grandchild is on its way, maybe tonight, maybe that was the call, I don't know. And I have a request of all the young people and of all the grandparents and parents, go tell your children tonight, Yom HaShoah is a good time to have babies. Because we are replenishing our people. And thank God we are doing so. This evening it is my pleasure and my honor to call upon the mayor of Edison Township, Antonio Rosigliano. Thank you, Rabbi. Good evening, everyone. Well, so far the program has been absolutely magnificent. I thank you very much for again including me uh, and asking me to join you. This is a wonderful occasion for all of us. It is something that we should always remember and cherish, it's something we can never forget. And furthermore, I proclaim that we, as citizens of the Township of Edison, should work together to promote human dignity and overcome intolerance and discrimination in our society. Thank you. Last uh, night, yesterday afternoon, Senator Barbara Buono and uh, I were together at the Federation Holocaust event, which was a beautiful event. Senator is always there for us in the Jewish community and in the community at large. Dynamite personality. I call upon her now for a few remarks. Thank you, Rabbi. It was nearly 70 years ago 
that the Allied armies began liberating the Nazi death camps. And in the process, they opened the world's eyes to the horrific extremes that human beings could go to in the name of hatred, evil, and intolerance. Unprecedented, even given man's violent past, we had to create a new word to describe the Nazis' plans for the systemic extermination of the Jews, that included gypsies, the infirm, the disabled, and everyone else who didn't fit their narrow worldview. The word was the Holocaust. For Jews, it has forever been Shoah, the calamity. And while the world has vowed never again to allow such a calamity to take place, all too often we have been faced with reminders that the lessons of the past must always be retaught. The world has witnessed genocide in Cambodia, Rwanda, the former Yugoslavia, and each time we find ourselves turning to the survivors of the Holocaust to be our frame of reference of how mankind can get things so horribly, horribly wrong. Here at home, a loud but thankfully small minority denies the Holocaust. Just a little more than a week ago, we witnessed neo-Nazis demonstrating outside the State House in Trenton, saluting to Adolf Hitler. And we honor those whose spirit, even as they questioned why their God would let something like this happen, but their spirit allowed them to survive, to tell the world their stories. But today, we must also honor the future generations who we will call upon to ensure that the lessons of the Shoah are never lost to time. And only this can ensure that these atrocities will never again occur. Thank you. upon our assemblyman, my dear friend, Peter Barnes. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's an important occasion to appear at the Holocaust Memorial. Uh, having grown up in Edison, I've always been very proud and I continue to be proud of, of the the, the multicultural town that we have. And having been here since age five uh, and seen the, the growth in the community and having grown up with African-American kids and Jewish kids and now my own children growing up with Asian kids, I really derive a, a great source of pride and pleasure out of that. So I can't say that it's a pleasure to be here. It's not a pleasure. It's not a pleasure for any of us. But I can say, I'm glad that I'm here. I'm glad to, to learn a lot about what happened, and I'm glad to take part in tonight's uh, memorial. Representing Edison Township Council, Councilman Robert Karabich. Thank you. In these tough economic times, a world of chaos and uncertainty, it's this memorial that brings people together as one community to remember. Together, we find the strength and the courage to move on into the future. And it is this community that will never let this happen again. Thank you. Representing the freeholders, my longtime buddy, freeholder James Paulus. Thank you, Rabbi. Uh, 
Reverend Owens, Rabbi Rosenberg, thank you so much for bringing us all together today to have an opportunity to share with you some words, but more importantly for us to be together to remember this moment. Um, as a former elected official from Highland Park, I served there for many years. I had perhaps, for many, um, somewhat of a unique experience as an elected official to, on a day-to-day -day basis, meet and speak with survivors and family members of survivors and sit down one-on-one -on -one and be able to understand so much about the history and the meaning of the Holocaust to them. That's why, Rabbi and Reverend, it's so important that we continue events like this. Because as you look to your right and left today, and I ask you to do that for a moment, look to your right and left, realize that at that time, individuals were that close as they lost the loved ones next to them. We need to continue to be together, to be united, to not forget, and to continue to work hard as elected officials and as all of you together in partnership to ensure that this never happens again. Thank you so much. We're now gonna continue with the candle lighting. We'll ask those that are lighting the candles to uh, please start coming up. I want to thank Mr. Raymond Fredericks, President and CEO of Solaris Health System. I went to him and I asked if Solaris would be good enough to uh, donate the funds for the candles tonight. He immediately said, yes, we thank you. So we're going to give the first candle to you.